This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. Welcome back to Fix or Flop. This rig was assembled with used components from eBay and has had issues as severe as not even powering on. As far as I'm aware, this graphics card has been replaced and so has this power supply. The owner was eventually able to get the system to power on, which that's step one, right? But then they ran into a no post issue where they weren't getting a signal to their monitor. And that is where we are today. This thing has been through a lot and it has not functioned since day one. In fact, there's not even Windows on this SSD because they haven't gotten a chance to install it. They can't because they're not getting a signal at this point. So um, yeah, <laughs> hopefully we can fix this. Also, the owner drove all the way from Jacksonville. That's a pretty committed drive from Orlando, especially considering I-4 traffic. So I'm gonna do my best to have this one up and running for them. Are you ready? Stay with me. Introducing Kyoxia's new XG8 series NVMe SSDs featuring 5th generation Bix Flash 3D TLC memory and PCIe 4.0 compatibility. With capacities up to 4 terabytes and support for optional security features like TCG Pyrite and Opal, Kyoxia drives are perfect for your next desktop, server, or workstation. Sequential reads and writes reach up to 7,000 and 5,800 megabytes per second respectively and are suited for ultra-fast program, OS, and VM load times, bundled with peace of mind warranties and and at affordable price points. Kyoxia's comprehensive PCIe 4 SSD portfolio continues to grow with products offered for a wide range of applications. Check them out, including their new XG8 drives by clicking the link below. Hey there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. I'm not gonna run through the same spiel I always do. You can find relevant info in the video description if you're interested in having your PC potentially fixed for free. That's the one thing I want you to know about all the work you see us do here. We do not charge these owners anything at all for any of the work that we do, the troubleshooting, the time it takes, uh, nor the parts if we have to replace components. We can either dip into our own pockets and buy things from eBay secondhand or reach out directly to vendors who would happily send something in exchange for a bit of exposure in the playlist. Your viewership, by the way, is what allows us to continue doing this, so thank you for that continued support. First things first, we're gonna attempt to replicate the issue described by the owner. The latest symptoms exhibited are just no post, which means that we're probably gonna see things light up, uh, but we shouldn't get a signal to our monitor. Monitor. We've got power at the rear, power up front. Okay, so it looks like front panel at least is wired correctly. All of the fans are spinning. Motherboard LEDs are lit, graphics cards lit, graphics card fans are spinning. Alrighty, this by the way is an Intel platform. I think it's actually, yeah, it's a Z270 platform. So that's Intel 7000 series. If I recall correctly, and um, unfortunately this board does not have a Dr. Debug LED. It has no debug LEDs at all of any kind that I can see. So we're going in blind, and um, well that perhaps makes for a slightly spicier video. I think the first thing I'm going to do is try to clear the CMOS, and then we're also going to check RAM seating, the two easiest things you can do when testing any rig. Oh, and very quickly, you can see we've got um, a bit of a mess down here, cable management wise. That's not a problem at all. We'll take care of that. Uh, just, yeah, just questionable cable runs all around. Uh, we do have two fans here, one for the CPU core, one at the rear set to exhaust a piece. That's totally fine. But then we have this top RGB fan, and this one's set to intake. Up top, that's a bit strange, even though it is dust filtered, it's just, um, yeah, it's a tad odd. And then this front fan is set to exhaust, which is also not conventional. Although I think this person did this because this AeroCool Cylon or whatever this case is called, um, it's just like the worst for airflow. There's zero channeling anywhere around here for air to get through. And so maybe they just did this because they wanted the aesthetic of like the LEDs to light things up inside. I'm not sure. I'm going to bring it to their attention, but I'm not going to change it because I think it was intentional. This case is just, yeah, it, it's a cheaper case. It is what it is in a budget build. Now you can see right here, it says clear CMOS and that I believe is corresponding to these two pins next to this fan header. So we've got the system fully powered off and I'm gonna jump these two pins for about 10 to 20 seconds. Also checking that DRAM is seated properly. I have reinserted each of these DIMMs into the correct slot. Let's try, oh, this is, does the camera get that? This is super loose. It should not be turning like this. We'll definitely have to tighten the CPU cooler uh, once we get this working. Now there are the things we just did work. So now I'm gonna rip the right side panel off and disconnect all non-vital cables so that we've isolated things down to just our platform, the graphics card and the power supply. Let's see how it looks behind here. Carefully get this off. All right, uh, not bad. This is not a modular power supply, so nothing super obvious on this side of things. I did verify that uh, major connections are sound on the other side as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and rip out all the non-vital stuff. You can see all this stuff down here disconnected, some stuff further up as well, and we still do not have a post. So I'm gonna shift my attention to 
this graphics card. Possibly an issue with video out here. I think we can bypass it and run off integrated graphics in the CPU. Easy does it. This, by the way, is a Zotac GTX 1070, and it looks fairly clean considering I believe it was purchased used. Um, it's actually in really good shape. Really like the way this card looks, by the way. So, will this be the answer to our problems? I'm kind of hoping not. But it would be a sin in my view not to test the graphics card earlier on because it's so easy to isolate and remove. Just listening to the fan curves here. Well, that, uh, that answers that. Still no post. So I think, I think our GTX 1070 here is still okay. That's a good thing. I wanted to quickly test the power supply, even though I didn't expect this was the problem just based on the symptoms we were seeing. And sure enough, it passes no issues at all. It just powered off because it needs to cool down. But uh, this is not our problem. I think what we're looking at is either a motherboard or a CPU issue. At this point, we've pretty much rolled it down to only the platform. We can check DDR4 very quickly. Um, I don't suspect that either of those DIMMs is bad, but that could certainly be one of the reasons why the system wouldn't post. These are 8 gig Micron DIMMs, by the way. I don't see any physical issues with them. Uh, they're just cheap. They don't have the heat sinks on them like most modules do nowadays, but that's okay. In a budget build, it actually makes sense to go this route. Now, just in case his Intel 7th gen chip doesn't have integrated graphics, which I'm not sure they even made any back then that didn't, unless it was like a very budget-oriented chip, I've got our trusty XFX card in here. And did it just turn off? Power cycle. And I also have a known and working DDR4 module in here as well. We're going to see if this fixes it. If it does, then we can work back just a tad since we've changed two different things. Um, his card very well could be dead, and we just have some other issue as well uh, at the same time as this. Oh my gosh, okay, <laughs> it did both. I'm really hoping that it's one of these dims. I'm hoping it's a cheap DDR4 kit. I, I think that's our problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is work backwards by removing this XFX card again and slotting in the GTX 1070. We'll connect that to power. And, wow, I mean, that would be really nice if that was all it was. Just a bad stick, or potentially two bad sticks of DRAM. Easy fix. So, back in you go. Nice and easy here. Okay, and then we'll just wire up supplemental power. And again, <laughs> let's try once more. I think this is gonna work. I, I think the card is fine. It would be a shame if there were two different problems with this, but it definitely can happen especially when buying used. It sounds like the system's posted because the fan curve is ramped far down very quickly, which is what it did last time. Oh, I, you know what? I should, should probably connect this. And FYI, while I'm at this, is because we turn the system on without a display cable connected to either the screen card or the motherboard, at this point, with the system still on, if I connect this HDMI cable, you'll see that we still won't get a picture out. Don't freak out here. This is normal. Sometimes it just defaults to integrated graphics if the discrete card isn't connected out of the gate. Um, you can see, yeah, there, there's no signal here. But I, I bet you, if we turn the system back off and then power it back on, I bet you now it's going to work right away. See, And so don't be misled by that. Um, perfectly normal if a system is not connected to something right away uh, for it to not actually send a signal out where you want it to once you do connect that cable without powering the system back off. So power cycle before you run a test like this. And there we go, we are in the BIOS. So it's one of these for sure. Uh, I'm going to very quickly figure out which one it is or maybe it's both, uh, but either way, I'm going to upgrade this person with a full two stick kit of nicer DRAM uh, just for a sweet little upgrade there. And then I'll return whichever one of these DIMMs is actually still working. Maybe they can repurpose it in a different build. By the way, the system still posts with our working DIMM in the second channel. So channel B, which is I think on the outside, channel A is on the inside. Uh, so this is not a dead memory channel issue, not something CPU or motherboard related. Again, I think it's just one of these. Speaking of, there we go. Let's figure out which one is actually broken. So I want you to watch these lights here where this yellow bar is on this motherboard. That will indicate board power. And uh, I'm going to turn the system on with one of the old dims connected. And look at that. See the flickering? It does this several times before the system just 
full blast the fans and refuses to post. And both dims do this, and I don't really know why. It's, it's strange for both to be bad. I've got the product listing pulled up here, and it doesn't look like this is ECC memory. It's just a uh, gig density, a pop. I, nothing out of the ordinary. I don't see a reason why these wouldn't work. And we've already tried clearing the CMOS multiple times. So we're working with default BIOS settings and the system still refuses to post with either of these. Um, the easy thing to do here is obviously just to replace them. They still might work in other rigs, but for whatever reason, I can't get these to work in this person's rig. That is 16 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB sound. These two modules look super sweet. They have RGB functionality, of course. It'll be a nice little upgrade for this owner. In we go, one at a time here. Put a bracket under the card as well to help with sag. It was pretty rough before. It looks a lot better now. Not perfect, but close. Right now I am rewiring things, uh, just trying to sort out cable management a tad. I would normally at this point try to power the system on before we commit to this, but um, I'm feeling confident, so why not? And if I blunder, at least it's on camera. I know I said I wouldn't be swapping this fan around, but I am just because I feel like it's not going to hurt to flip it and have it pull in whatever air it can from the front, even though the panel's totally choked off. I will, however, leave the top fan set to intake as well. Uh, it is filtered up there, and I think any bit of air getting into the case is going to matter a lot for something that is uh, otherwise regarded as a hot box. And I quickly tighten the CPU cooler because boy oh boy, and you look at that play, like that's, that is not good. So we gotta torque these screws just a bit more. Some of them actually are tight, but some of them, oh, there's no way. Yeah, this one, yeah, see this one's not even, <laughs> it's not even held in. I'm not sure why it was omitted, but it's not threading in, so. That would explain why things are so loose here. Gonna straighten up just a tad back here, redo some zip ties and things. It's um, a bit of a mess as is, and there's not a ton of room behind this tray to actually route cables, so I'll give it my best shot. There's really not a ton, again, I could do with this case, but uh, I mean, at least things are somewhat kind of orderly now. They do stick out a good way, so we're gonna have to press that right panel on a bit, uh, a bit harder than normal. But other than that, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Not bad. And here's what she looks like from the left side. Looks a lot cleaner now, I think. The cables have been routed appropriately. Uh, we've got the graphics card anti-sag bracket in there as well. I'll have that link below. It's like 10 bucks or something. Super cheap if you want one. Uh, and then we fixed the CPU cooler. It was unevenly mounted, super loose. That's tightened up. We've got the new DDR4 in there. This thing looks a lot better in my view. Let's go ahead and power it on. I'll need to install Windows. I told them I would do that because they never had a chance before. And this thing will be good to go. Let's turn on power at the rear, power up front. And hope for the best. We don't have one fan spinning. Oh, that would be, that would be my fault. Now it's spinning. All right, everything looks good. We do have that post. And if I have the correct USB drive installed, we should load straight into bootable media to install Windows 10. There were a few wonky settings in the BIOS to work out to even boot into this uh, bootable media. It was really strange. I'd never run into that before, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and install Windows now, and then we will be finished with this PC. This here is our SSD. You can see it's a one terabyte drive, not bad. We're gonna go ahead and click next and let it do its thing. And here we are, Windows is installed and the rig is finally, finally ready for some action. Thank you so much for watching this first episode of our fourth season of Pixar Felt. I cannot believe we're on the fourth season already. And I know yeah, these aren't really coming out every season, so to speak. I'm just doing 20 per chunk and uh, that allows me a bit of breathing room between so that I can set things up again, change things if I need to, especially on the forum when viewers submit their rigs. And I think we've got a really good thing going here. I'm excited to, eventually, at some point down the line, spread this out to where we can fix viewers' rigs in other places as well. We get tons of inquiries from folks who don't live anywhere near Florida. And to, to those I have to say, currently, there's nothing we can do, I'm sorry. We can't even help over the air. There's just no time, there, there's, there's frankly not. You can get a lot of help from our Discord server, however, and that is totally free of charge to join. There's a tech help section uh, and a lot of good folks there who might be able to point you in the right direction if you run into issues like these here. Uh, with that, if you have a broken system and you do live in or around Orlando, Florida, be sure to submit a form linked in the video description. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you have not already and stay tuned for the next one. Again, I want to thank you so much for watching these videos and allowing us to continue doing what we do here. My name is Greg. Thanks for 
learning with me.